All right, Matt, thank you. We'll talk more with Matt coming up in a little bit in uh, just a few minutes. But right now, we've got to talk about a big shakeup on Rocky Top. It's our next big 7-7 seven seven story for you right now. Lady Vols basketball coach Kelly Harper is now out just a few days after the team's second round exit from the NCAA tournament. Six Sports' Casey K joins us now in the studio with more on today's big news. Casey. Thanks, Bo. After five years at the helm, Kelly Harper's time on Rocky Top has come to a close. Four 20-plus win seasons, four trips to the NCAA tournament, and two Sweet 16s is enough for almost every program in the country. But the standard for a legendary Lady Vol program is just different. Harper compiled a record of 108 wins and 52 losses throughout her time at Tennessee. Though the team made the NCAA tournament the last four years, Tennessee was never able to get over the hump of beating a team that was ranked above them in the tournament. The Lady Vols run never exceeding past the Sweet 16. Today's announcement came from Athletic Director Danny White with kind words of Harper's impact over the last few seasons. Saying decisions like these are never easy to make, especially with someone who has done so much for the Lady Vols as a three-time national champion, student athlete. Her love and passion for Tennessee and the Lady Vols is second to none. She has invested so much heart and soul into our program and truly has given her all for Tennessee. I thank Kelly for her stewardship of our women's basketball program and wish her and John well in the next chapter of their lives. In the release sent out by Tennessee Athletics today, it said that a search for a new head coach will begin immediately. White saying that we will not hear from him until they are ready to announce that new head coach. Casey, thank you. Our next big story for you, hearing from Loudoun County Sheriff about the killing of a married couple. Investigators this morning revealed their names, James and Betty Ramsey. He was 78, she was 75. The husband and wife were found dead at their home off Highway 321. This was around noon yesterday. Shortly after the victims were found, 53-year-old Julian Philip Goodrum, who was living at the Ramsey's home, was taken into custody. According to Loudoun County Sheriff Jimmy Davis, Goodrum had interacted with first responders for mental health evaluations in the days leading up to the alleged murder. Davis says since the arrest, they have been working on building a solid case against him. He's in custody right now. Um just waiting on that bond hearing. We're still going through all the evidence, speaking with our attorney general's office, Russell Johnson, and speaking with his DAs on uh, maybe some future charges coming. Uh, there was a vehicle that was stolen from the residence that was found. So more charges will probably come, but right now it's just a first degree murder for, for both the victims right now. Davis tells us the victims were very well known and involved in the Greenback area, and this has come as a shock to the tight knit community. You know, we've told you about Goodrum's mental health issues in the past. Back in 2005, Don Dare actually traveled to Washington, D.C., where Goodrum, then an Army lieutenant, had been treated for a year at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, suffering from severe PTSD. At the time, Goodrum was facing a court martial accused of being AWOL for checking himself into a Knoxville hospital to seek care. When I'm into a, a, a severe panic attack, I come uh, extremely... Uh, Nervous, I shake, uh, breath gets short. The AWOL charge was dismissed, from, but Goodrum still faced another hearing claiming he had disobeyed orders for not returning to Fort Knox. Now, Don reported at the time that Goodrum's case had become a rallying cry for fellow veterans angry at the military's handling of PTSD cases. Our next big story for you, Mayor Glenn Jacobs responding to the vote against Advance Knox. As we told you last week, after two years of work, Knox County's plan for handling growth was shot down in a 3-2 to two vote by the Farragut Board of Mayor and Aldermen. The vote in Farragut was going to be the second to last step in getting the plan officially approved, with just a final vote from Knox County Commission on the comprehensive land use map scheduled to follow. However, with the 3-2 vote Friday, county residents and advocates are wondering what happens next. Mayor Glenn Jacobs expressing disappointment with the vote this morning and discussing the options to move forward. We had everybody at the table throughout this process. It was very transparent, a lot of community input. One of the most disappointing things was the three aldermen who voted against the amendments didn't partake in that process. They did not return surveys of infrastructure, uh, issues regarding their area. Uh, so they didn't partake, yet they choose uh, to vote against this. And nothing really changed in Farragut. Deputy Law Director for the county, Mike Moyers, went on to say this will be the next step, and if mediation between the parties does not work, a panel of arbiters will then make a decision.
Healthcare providers are still dealing with the cyber attack on Change Healthcare, which is owned by United Health. The attack took place back on February 21st. According to United Health, the group known as Black Cat is taking responsibility for the attack. On March 7th, United Health announced the company restored 99% of Change Healthcare Pharmacy Network services. However, despite that figure, patients and medical providers are still searching for answers. Administrators like me who are sitting in their office sweating it because thank God we had actually some some dollars on the side that we insisted on having in order for us, you know, keep your white dollar for a black day. And had we not done that, we would have been in major harm's way. And imagine you going to your employee and telling them, I don't have money for you. What happens next? Pharmacists are also impacted by the cyber attack through several initiatives. United Health has offered more than $2 billion to assist providers. Akeem hopes the federal government will be more proactive in the future. The man accused of killing one and injuring another Blunt County deputy has now been indicted by a grand jury. Kenneth DeHart Jr. is accused of killing Deputy Greg McCowan and injuring Shelby Eggers. DeHart was captured at a home in Knoxville after nearly five days after a February preliminary hearing. His case was bound over to the grand jury with charges of first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and felon in possession of a, of a weapon. His arraignment is on Friday at 9 a.m. Of course, we will bring you the latest updates in this case. The pilot who was involved in the 2021 fatal helicopter crash in Sevier County arraigned in court today. Less than two weeks ago, we found out Matthew Jones, age 36, was indicted for reckless homicide in December of 2021. A helicopter he was flying crashed near the Sevier Cock County line just off of Highway 321. It was only in the air for about eight minutes before then dropping off the radar. A preliminary report claims Jones was warned several times of the weather conditions. We're still working to find out more about his next court date. A man was just arrested out in California in connection to a local bank robbery from last month. The robbery happened around 3.30 back on March 22nd at the Newport Federal Bank along East Broadway. You know, we showed you some of these pictures last week. According to investigators, a man entered the bank and approached an employee. He apparently handed them a note demanding money and indicating that he had a weapon. We're told that employee complied with the demand and the suspect ran out of the bank with an undisclosed amount of money. Well, Newport police worked with the FBI and the Cock County Sheriff's Office to investigate the crime. They quickly accused 34-year-old Jeremiah Center of being connected and issued arrest warrants for the man who we're told had flown to Los Angeles after the heist. Center was arrested last night at the L.A. airport, charged with aggravated robbery and theft.